Section 4.5, Formal Charges and Resonance. Formal charge is the hypothetical charge an atom would have if we could redistribute the electrons in the bonds evenly between the atoms. Essentially, what we are doing here is we, we are going to imagine we're going to take these molecules and we're going to rip them apart by the bonds. And we're going to take those bonds and we're going to evenly distribute the electrons back to the respective atoms. So we can calculate the formal charge of each atom in a Lewis structure using this equation, where the formal charge equals the valence electrons minus the associated electrons. So when I say valence electrons, I am talking about the atom's group number. So how many elec valence electrons would that atom have if it was by itself? The associated electrons are the sum of the lone pair electrons on the atom in that Lewis structure plus half the bonding electrons. Since again, we are imagining that we're taking the bonds and we're ripping them in, ha in half, distributing them equally between the atoms. So the easiest way to find the associated electrons is to count dots lone pair electrons and dashes, one for a single bond, two for a double bond, and three for a triple bond. So let's look at an example. So we've got the molecule ozone here. So ozone is composed of three oxygen atoms bonded together. Now each of the oxones in ozone actually has a different formal charge. So let's start with this first one. Well oxygen, when it's by itself, it normally has six valence electrons. So across the top here you'll see six for each of these. Now let's count associated electrons. So this oxygen has one, two, three, four, four electrons from lone pairs, and then it would get two electrons from these bonds here, since again, we're imagining like we're taking this bond and we're ripping it in half. So two electrons will go to that oxygen atom, two will go to that atom. <clears throat> so this oxygen atom has six associated electrons, which gives it a formal charge of zero. Let's go to this middle oxygen. So again, oxygen, when it's by itself, it has six valence electrons. Now this oxygen has one, two, three, four, five. It has five associated electrons, two from this lone pair right here and three from the bonds, which gives it a formal charge of plus one. Finally, this last oxygen atom, again, six valence electrons, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seven associated electrons, which gives this oxygen atom a formal charge of minus one. So zero, plus one, and minus one. One thing you should also note here is that the formal charges of the component atoms should sum to the overall charge of the molecule. So ozone is a neutral molecule, and if you sum these formal charges, zero, plus one, plus negative one, you get an overall charge of zero. So let's have you try a question here. What is the formal charge on nitrogen on the nitrate ion NO3 minus? So pause the video and give this one a try. Okay, the correct answer is C, plus one. So I'm gonna go through the steps of drawing the Lewis structure here pretty quickly. So the Lewis structure for nitrate looks like this. and then you'd have brackets around it with a negative one charge. So here we're focusing on nitrogen. Okay, so nitrogen by itself normally has five valence electrons and we're, then we are going to subtract from the associated electrons. So nitrogen does not have any lone pair electrons, so no lone pair electrons, and then it would have one, two, three, four, four bonding electrons. So this gives us an overall formal charge of a plus one five valence electrons minus the sum of the lone pair electrons and the bonding electrons, of which nitrogen would have four here. So a formal charge of plus one. Okay, so why do we care about this? Well, formal charge can be really useful for predicting molecular structure, because you're gonna have some situations where Lewis structures, you have multiple options. So a molecular structure in which all formal charges are zero it's preferable to one in which some formal charges are not zero. Now, if it must have non-zero formal charges, the arrangement with the smallest non-zero formal charges is preferable. It's also preferable to have adjacent formal charges either be zero or of the opposite sign. It's not good to have atoms next to each other that have the same sign charge, like two negative atoms or two positive atoms next to each other. Now, when we must choose among several Lewis structures with similar distributions of formal charges, 
the structure with the negative formal charges on the more electronegative atoms is preferable. So let's look at a couple examples here. So here we've got three different Lewis structures for carbon dioxide. So all three of these are technically valid Lewis structures because they all use the correct number of electrons. They all use 16 electrons and they all sh show all three atoms having octets. So if you count here, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. 16 valence electrons, right? Four from carbon, 12 from the two oxygen atoms. And if you go through and look at these, all of the atoms have an octet here. So technically, these are all valid Lewis structures. So how do we decide which one is the best? Well, that's why we want to look at formal charges. So if you look at this first structure here, all three atoms have a formal charge of zero. In this structure, carbon is still zero, but this oxygen is plus one, this oxygen is minus one. So this is a decent formal charge, but not as good as this one. And then here we've got, this, in this structure, this oxygen is zero, this oxygen is plus two, this oxygen, is, or excuse me, this carbon is minus two. So this one right here is clearly the best structure. This is clearly the best structure because it shows the formal charge is being minimized. Down here, we see an example of the thiocyanate ion. So this is SCN minus. So the thiocyanate ion has also has a total of 16 electrons to be used. So all three of these are valid Lewis structures. They all use 16 electrons and they all sh show all three atoms having an octet. So in this uh, Lewis structure, Nitrogen's got a charge of minus one, right? Six associated electrons, so five minus six, minus one. Zero for carbon, zero for sulfur here, minus two plus one and zero, and then over here, minus two plus two minus one. So some crazy charges right here. So clearly this is the best. And these are not the only structures you could draw for the thiocyanate ion. You could draw multiple others. You could show a triple bond here and a single bond here and vice versa. There are multiple different ways to draw this Lewis structure and come up with a valid answer, but these are not the best answers. This is the best possible answer because it minimizes the formal charge values and it also places the negative sign on a very electronegative element. Okay, second thing to talk about in this section is resonance. So some molecules, they can be drawn with the atoms in the same places, but the electrons in different places. So typically, when we do step five of drawing Lewis structures, we will have to choose between two or more equivalent atoms to pull electrons from. If you think about the example we looked at back at the start of section 4.4, there was a Lewis structure we did with CHO2 minus, where I said you needed to pull a lone pair from one of the oxygen atoms to form a double bond with carbon. It didn't matter which one. And so this is the reason why it doesn't matter which one because that structure or molecules like this, they have what are called resonance structures or resonance forms. So a really good example of resonance is the nitrate, uh, nitrite ion, NO2 minus. NO2 can be drawn two different ways and we use double arrows between the resonance structures. So you can draw it like this, where the double bond is in between this nitrogen and oxygen, and then this oxygen has three lone pairs, or you can flip it the other way. Now the double bond is here, and this oxygen atom has six lone pairs. So tentatively, you can kind of think of it like the molecule going back and forth from one form to the other, but the truth is that the true structure of the molecule is actually the average of these two structures. So in reality, this molecule is not switching back and forth. The double bond is not flipping back and forth between two places. The true structure would be an average of these two. So the mo molecule, instead of having one single bond and one double bond, what it actually has is a 1.5 bond from nitrogen to each of the oxygens, which that's often drawn as a solid line with a dashed line. But you do still need arrows to deal with the lone pairs. Okay, another example of resonance is carbonate, the carbonate ion, CO32 minus it can be drawn three different ways. And again, we use double arrows between the resonance structures. We can have the double bond here, we can have it here, or we can have it here. Again, in reality, the molecule has a one and one third bond between carbon and each of the oxygens, instead of having a double bond and two single bonds. Okay, here are a few practice problems for you to try. So pause the video, give, give these an attempt. 
And here are the answers for those practice problems. Okay, that concludes this section. I'll see you in the next video for section 4.6, Molecular Structure and Polarity.